As we continue to explore distorted figures, something to keep in mind and remember is that figure distortion is purposeful and not accidental. So for example, looking at this example from Picasso, um, he, we, we talked about cubism last year and how he drew the figure from multiple angles at one time. So, you know, you're seeing a face, eyes from the front, nose from a three quarter, um, and then the body parts are all kind of in different viewpoints. Um, this is what made Picasso famous. But one thing non-art people tend to not understand is that Picasso drew realistically at the beginning of his career. Um, artists don't, this, this isn't his style because he can't draw realistically. That is completely untrue, and that's what people don't understand about modern art a lot of the times. Um, Picasso drew like this because he was um, innovative and he wanted to do something different that nobody else was doing. And that is why this work is famous and special. If he would have just continued to draw figures uh, anatomically correct, similar to how maybe Michelangelo or da Vinci uh, would address figures, he would have never gotten the credibility of being a genius. Um, so I want you to keep that in mind when you think about figure distortion, um, being intentional. This is not because we can't draw figures anatomically correctly. It is because sometimes it is imperative based on what we want to accomplish, either evoking emotions or conveying a particular concept that we want to distort figures. Hi juniors, we're going to start our sketchbook today and we're going to begin by referencing the artists that you posted yesterday on your art Instagram. Um, I looked through your art Instagrams and it seems like everyone picked somebody different, which is great. Um, so me personally, I'm going to look at the work of Egon Scheele. He wasn't somebody that I had uh, up for you yesterday, but he's one of my favorite. Um, he does these very like elongated, um, sometimes very uh, like emaciated figures. Um, lots of like rib cages and uh, simplified line structure, but I really enjoy his work. Um, so he's who I'm going to look at for emulation today. When I say emulation, I don't mean I want to see you copy that person. What I'm saying is just take some ways that they distort the figure and use them in your own work. To get started with this, one thing you're going to need is your sketchbook, obviously. And to do this, we're going to want to open to a two-page spread. So you're going to want to make sure that you have you're able to open your sketchbook and have two clean pages on either side. Another thing you're going to need to get started is a reference image of somebody that could be you, that could be someone off the internet, it could be a friend, maybe you have a picture of somebody in your photo gallery. Um, I'm going to use a picture of myself just because I prefer to use images that I've taken or created. Um, rather than taking images off the internet. So that's gonna be my reference image for when I do my figure distortion. Being a study in our sketchbook, what that means is that we're going to be basically researching and making discoveries. And I wanna show you some examples of some sketchbooks that are showing a study and the difference between a study and like a finalized drawing. So if you look at here at this sketchbook, you can see it's a two page spread. Um, you know, it's, in this, it's a study of color um, and color placement, but you can see notes, color palette, um, along with some studies of the human face. Okay? You don't need to worry about composition here or placement. We're just focusing on studying something. And in your case, it's going to be the distorted figure. Okay? Here's another great example of a study in a sketchbook. Um, Again, not worrying about placement, but worrying about 
learning and understanding something. Here's a really great example of a sketchbook study where you're seeing lots of little drawings, uh, some notes, possibly some reference images. And as we go down, here's a figure study, uh, figure drawing study again. There's just lots of little drawings on the paper. Composition is not important. We see notes. There's another example. So I don't want you to think about this assignment as like a final drawing in any way. I want you to think of it as a way to gain some knowledge and understanding on figure distortion. Okay, here's another really great example of a study relating to portraiture. So this is what I'm looking for in your sketchbook is just multiple figures drawn on the page, notes, and then maybe the figure addressed in some different ways. To get started on this, I'm gonna just use one of my sides of my paper. Remember, this is experimental and it is a study. So placement doesn't matter. You can start placing your figures anywhere. It's no problem. You don't need to think about composition here. Um, you can include notes and you can use any sort of materials you want on this. So I'm going to start with a pencil, but then I'm going to, you know, maybe add paint, add color pencil, maybe some watercolor. Anything will be fine on this mixed media paper. Um, again, I'm referencing an image of myself. You need to reference a figure image of somebody. It doesn't have to be you. Um, and when you get started, it's going to probably feel a little bit uncomfortable because you're going to be working outside of your comfort zone. Um, not only are you probably not used to distorting uh, what you're drawing, you're used to maybe taking an image and drawing it as is. So I want you to um, be patient with yourself as you work through the process. Again, I'm not looking for a direct emulation of the artist that you uh, research yesterday. I'm just looking that you maybe pull some inspiration from that person and you know bake your own style into it as you go. you can see where I'm going with this. Um, I actually, if you want to take a look at what I was kind of looking at as I was drawing, um, I kind of took this image from Egon Scheele and rendered in a way where I'm uh, mimicking some of his color palettes um, and also the way he is addressing the negative space with the shirt. Uh, I'm gonna leave the dress white, see how that looks. Um, and I'm going to continue drawing into the leg area here, but you can see how, you know, you can create some emulations and how I distorted the figure through the way, a similar way that Egon Schiele would have done, um, taking the body and really um, thinning it out, uh, creating limbs that are very, very, very skinny, very spindly, um, fingers, um, and then using a color palette to kind of make the figure look almost sickly. Um, so that is what you're going to work on today, is just creating, try to create one figure, and it doesn't have to be a full figure, you could zoom in on certain areas, it could just be the top half perhaps, or the bottom half. Um, try to do more than just portraiture, uh, try to include some part of the body as well. Um, but we're gonna work on this um, today, tomorrow, Friday, and Monday as well, right? So we're gonna continue with this today. I can't see, wait to see what you create.